Okay, so now what we're going to try and talk about is the effect of a tariff okay, in terms of the total surplus. Okay, so now here, I put up a little bit of a key here so you understand what the abbreviations are that we kind of have to use to make it more presentable. NT is supposed to represent no tariff. T is supposed to represent having a tariff. In particular, when we say the price at no tariff, what we mean is the world price. Okay, there is trade. It's just um, you know, it's trade without any type of trade protection. Okay, and then we have P sub T, which is supposed to be you know, the world price plus the tariff. Okay, that's what happens when a tariff is applied. Basically, the domestic price becomes the world price, but with this tariff added on. Okay, another thing to remember is the tariff is a tax on imports. Okay, so we start off with this graph of the domestic market, and as you see, we've done several times, the uh, domestic equilibrium price, where these two cross. Okay, so now we add in the fact that we have trade. Okay, and so that's going to be the price that the uh, domestic market will face if we have trade that is no tariff, the world price. Okay, as opposed to if we have the price under the tariff. Now, before we get to that, what we should try and show here first is what is the quantity domestically demanded and domestically supplied when we have no tariff. Okay, and remember how to do that. Well, you just look at where this price hits the demand. That will give you the domestic demand at that price. Okay, so the quantity domestically demanded when there's no tariff. Okay, in terms of domestic supply, again, at this price, where does it hit the domestic supply? Curve? Okay, so then what happens when we have the tariff? Again, we say we add on the tariff to the world price, this price on the tariff. And so, of course, it's going to be further up. Okay, so imagine at a point somewhere like this. Okay, so now we have to ask ourselves, where is the domestic supply and domestic demand now that we have the tariff? Okay, so again, what we use is the demand and the supply. So to find the quantity domestically demanded under the tariff, we just figure out where this price hits the demand curve. Okay. And then to find the domestic supply under the tariff, we simply see where it hits the supply curve. So notice, one thing we could say is in terms of this domestic demand and this domestic supply, the domestic demand under the tariff minus the quantity domestically supplied under this tariff, what is this actually going to equal to? Well, this is going to be the imports. Okay, So imports under the tariff. Okay, so now that we have drawn this, this out, what I want to do now is instead of using you know, pens and different colors, we just use a series of letters. Okay, because what we want to do is do a comparison of what the surpluses are when we have the tariff and when we don't. So see, we have basically A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then H here. Okay. Okay, and so the question is, is you know, looking at this. Starting with the no tariff, what is the consumer surplus? Well, again, remember, what is the price? Well, the price under, when we don't have a tariff, is down here. So what is the consumer surplus? It's basically the area under the demand and above that price. And so what it essentially is, well, it's A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F and plus G. Okay, so it's almost all the letters. And then what is the producer surplus? Well, again, it's the area below the price and above the domestic supply. And we see that that is H. Okay, now in terms of tax revenue, there is no tax revenue here. There's no tariff. So that's zero. And so the total surplus is simply, again, adding up the producer and the consumer surplus. And so if we do that, we basically get A through H. Okay, so then what happens if there is a tariff? Okay, so 
Again, what we have to do is, first of all, find the price. So the price here is PT. Okay, now that we know that, what's the consumer surplus? All right, the consumer surplus, remember the net benefit to consumers, is the area below the demand and above the price. So in this case, it's only going to be A plus B plus C. Okay, just this area here. Now, what about in terms of the producer surplus? Well, in terms of the producer surplus, okay, well, again, this is the price, so it's below this price and above the domestic supply. So it's going to be D plus H. Okay, so now, though, what about tax revenue? So before we didn't have to worry about this because we never had any type of tax, no tariff. But now we do. So where is this revenue? Okay, so in terms of the tariff revenue, the tariff revenue is going to be equal to the tariff itself, but then times the number of units that we say are under the tariff. So what we could actually say is, instead of putting this, we could say times imports under the tariff. Okay, and so what is the tariff? Well, it's basically, if we look at it, we look at you know, what we've written up here, what these are supposed to correspond to, the tariff itself is actually this, the world price plus the tariff minus the world price. So if we were to write it down here, we could say it's the price piece of T minus the price PNT, okay, piece of NT. Okay, so that's going to be our tariff. Now, what about the imports under the tariff? Well, we already found that over here, okay? Imports under the tariff, the quantity domestically demanded under this tariff, minus the quantity domestically supplied. Okay, so what we can do is just simply enter that in here, and then from that, we could figure out From that, we can figure out on the graph where the tariff is. Okay, so it's supposed to be basically the distance here, PT minus PNT, and then the distance here, the quantity domestically demanded minus that domestically supplied. So you have this, you have this, and so you can see which particular area this corresponds to. It's actually F. Okay, so in terms of the total surplus, if we add it up, what we get here is A plus B plus C plus D plus F plus H. Okay. All right. So in terms of which one, you know, in terms of the effect of the tariff, what we see is, you know, this differential in terms of total surplus. And you see in terms of this left column, the total surplus is higher. Okay. We basically have what? Well, it corresponds to basically these two areas here. G and E. So you notice that under the tariff, the producers do better, they gain this D, but the consumers lose so much that overall, the total surplus is actually going down. And it's going down by these amounts here. Okay? All right, so that's the effect of a tariff.